My name is Pat O'Connor and this is video number 14 in my National Mortgage Exam Tutorial Series. Today we'll be talking about USDA loans, but first I want to mention that I do have a study guide available on Amazon. The material in these videos is taken from that study guide with a few enhancements and the study guides have hundreds of practice questions to practice exams. It's available in Kindle and paperback. I personally think paperback is better for quiz questions, but it's up to you. It's there if you want it. Second thing is that I do offer downloaded uh, practice quizzes for each one of these videos, but starting with video number eight, you have to be a subscriber. And I do ask that before you subscribe, that you check your YouTube privacy settings and make sure that subscriptions are public because I will need on your first request to see that your name on the request matches uh, one of the subscribers that I, I can see the names. And the instructions, more complete instructions on how to get the download link will be up here at the end of the video. Okay, so USDA loans. These are loans that are either funded or partially guaranteed by the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA. And they're the least well-known of the government loans. We have talked about FHA and VA in the two previous videos. And this is kind of a combination of those two with its own twists. So these are for rural areas, lower income individuals. And rural is defined as areas on an, you know, an eligibility map that has less than 10,000 individuals living there. But the thing is, is these maps are only redrawn every 10 years. So you know that you can have the major metro areas spread out in, within 10 years in so that may actually be more of a suburban area than really a rural area. So if you're approving a lower income individual who might possibly live in one of these areas, check the eligibility map first because they're really great loans. 100% financing, you know, so look into it and you are all want to be loan originators. All right. Just keep that in your head when it comes time to qualify people. And you'll have to check with your mortgage company to make sure that you can originate those loans or with your lenders that you can originate those loans. It is estimated that 97% of the United States is eligible for these, but they don't, do a whole lot of them because they're, they are not well known. So add it to your, you know, list of tricks. Okay. Down payment, as I said, there is a hundred percent financing. These have a uh, mortgage insurance that, you know, FHA loans have mortgage insurance. There is a one time guarantee fee. That is lower than the FHA's fee, and it can be uh, added to the loan balance or paid as a closing cost at the closing. And then they have a mandatory monthly insurance fee that it does not depend. If you put down a down payment, you still have to pay it, and it's for the life of the loan. All right, it's not going to expire until you either pay off the loan or you refinance out of the loan and the loan is paid off. 
So the pool of money, again, like FHA from these mortgage insurance premiums, go to reimburse lenders for their loss. USDA will fund some loans, but they also depend on USDA approved lenders to provide funding for loans. And, you know, they'll be partially guaranteed for their losses. If there's a short sale or a foreclosure or the market prices dip when it's time to, you know, resell. All right, the qualifying properties is single family homes for uh, the main loan program. No, you can buy a duplex as long as you live in one of the units that, you know, FHA and VA have. This is single family homes, rural, no working farms. So it can be a farmhouse, you know, like an older farmhouse that's now on a lot of acreage, but you're not commercially farming that acreage. So the rural areas are considered areas with less than 10,000 people. Again, they redraw these maps every 10 years so you can't be sure what areas will be eligible. So check out the maps. I did a quick Google last night on USDA loans in Florida, and there's a lot of, you know, areas that are eligible for it. They're centered around the bigger towns like Orlando and, and things, but the, there's a wide swath of land available. There is, if you want to purchase a multifamily, there is a separate multifamily housing loan for buyers who don't want to live in it, but they want to provide housing for the elderly, um, for the lower income, for farm workers or disabled tenants in these rural areas. So kind of like Section 8 program um, that the FHA has. So that's kind of like this if you want to. But FHA doesn't provide a separate housing program for this. So this if you want multifamily housing, you want to purchase that and lease it, um, then, you, then you can. So borrower qualifications, low income, and the definition of low income is adjusted gross income that does not exceed 115% of the median area income. Now, you don't have to be in the middle of, you know, the prairies, all right? Again, these maps are only redrawn every 10 years. So it could be an area where the population actually has a higher income than what you might expect from a blue collar area. So keep it in mind when you're originating loans. Many lenders require a 640 credit score but there may, you know, are higher, but there may be exceptions depending on their debt, depending on the amount of money in the bank. So don't immediately disqualify them. Again, you guys check with your managers and find out the particulars of the program. Debt to income ratio tends to be the standard 43%. Seller concessions. A concession is where a seller can pay part of the closing costs. But with the USDA, it's a little trickier it's because there may be in a sparsely populated area, there may be very few recently sold homes. 
So with the 6% concessions, when the appraiser comes in to do the appraisal, they will determine if the 6% concession is normal common for that area. Is that a normal fee that sellers may pay? If not, the amount of concessions that the seller can contribute to the buyer at closing to pay closing costs will be reduced. So your, um, you know, if you get a real estate agent that's in one of these areas, they probably know what's normal seller concessions. And typically, real estate agents are the ones that refer the loan originators to the buyers. So you can get together with that realtor and figure out, well, you know, like, what can the concessions be? But it would be on an addendum on the contract. So, you know, you could see that. Okay. So the appraisals, again, because... There can be few recently sold properties. The condition of the home may be more important than, you know, a year old or two year old comparable sales. And the appraiser will come in and do the thorough inspection. The same way FHA and VA inspectors come in and usually do more thorough inspections than regular home inspectors. Loan features, loan term of 30 years. And unlike the other government loans, there are no adjustable rate loans with the USDA. They are all fixed rate loans. They are assumable by qualified buyers, and there is a 4% late fee. Okay, so that wraps this up. The instructions on how to request the quiz are up here over my head. So again, keep this in mind. It's not a well-known loan program but it could help you earn a commission when someone else may not, somebody may not qualify under another program. Okay, next week we'll talk about conventional loans. Thank you, bye.